I'm Aaron Jackson, and I'm the sports editor at the East Carolinian. I'm Ty Gavin, the copy editor. I'm Chase Carroll, sports chief. I'm Alvaro Romero, baseball reporter. I'm Daniel Roberts, baseball reporter. This is TechSpurts. Welcome back to another week of Baseball Tech Experts. Here today to help us recap the series against Western Carolina University and preview UNC and Old Dominion University, Daniel Roberts is here as a baseball writer. Today we'll be recapping the series against Western Carolina University, Campbell University, and previewing the series this weekend against the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and Old Dominion University next week. Guys, what's the biggest takeaway from this last weekend's series against Western Carolina? So against Western Carolina, I think we saw both our starting pitchers and our relief pitchers really perform well. Uh, we saw them, uh, they came away with 30 strikeouts to just uh, three Jake Agnos walks. Uh, which is impressive, striking out 30 uh, batters compared to just uh, three walks. Um, so we saw the depth there and uh, what our starting pitchers can really do. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Chase touched on it. 13 pitchers out of the 14 pitchers who made appearances at Western Carolina had zero walks. Um, they came in, basically locked down the Catamounts the whole time. I don't think we got to see too much of the ECU hitting because of how bad the Western uh, Carolina pitching was, and that's not their fault. They play in the Southern Conference, which is just a home run hitting conference. They didn't have the pitching that they needed to beat ECU, and they took advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pitching was basically flawless. Like, you really couldn't see any problems, like, didn't see any, like, Mistakes like Jake Agnos probably made the most mistakes, like allowing two runs before Tyler Smith came into the game and allowed no hits, no mm -hmm. runs, no errors. But the ECU pitching definitely was like put on full display the first weekend against Western Carolina. To have a bullpen like that is huge after you get out. I think ECU outscored the Catamounts 10 to 1 in the first inning, and then mm -hmm. it, even when Jake Agnos gets into that kind of danger, you bring in Tyler Smith and he just locks it down and shuts down the Catamounts, and you have that five run lead, and, and they never really had a chance to get back into it. Yeah, that offensive output by ECU was very high. Like, it was not expected in the first weekend series, but ECU scored 8 3 in the first win, 8 2 in the second win, and 9 3 in the last win. What do you think is the credit for this 27 run output? So one player that uh, really performed well over the Western Carolina series was junior Connor Litton. Uh, he had a three run home run to go with his, uh, just one of his five hits. He walked four separate times, so he's really seeing the ball well, uh, really taking it in, um, just, just got his eye on the ball and, and is taking walks. That's something you want getting your guys on bases. Mm -hmm. Putting him in the five hole is a huge thing. He does a great job seeing at bats. He takes a lot of pitches, and then he, he doesn't only hit home runs. He had a couple big doubles that drove in runs. And then when well, you want to talk about home runs, Spencer Brickhouse hits two, two three-run home runs. He has six RBIs in that series, picks up right where he left off last year as the team leading home runs. Um, I mean, the kid just looks like a stud only as a sophomore, too. It's going to be hard to pitch him. Yeah, like Brickhouse just really get it thing started because he hit a home run to, like, his first at bat, like, in the first two games, like, really got ECU going mm -hmm. and just allowed them to put distance between themselves and the Catamounts. And then Linton, I mean, has like a .545 batting average. Like, that's just, you know, that's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing just at the start of the season. Batting from everybody, like, it's been really impressive so far this season. And maybe I believe it will definitely continue against UNC. So each and every one of y'all each touched on um, the pitching this weekend in the bullpen. Um, one of you said something about Jake Agnos. Has anybody else impressed you other than Jake Agnos in that bullpen? Well, uh, someone that came in for Jake Agnos was uh, Tyler Smith came in for four innings and allowed just three hits, which is uh, something you want to see when your starting pitcher is struggling, have a guy in the bullpen that you can look to to, to get you out of a jam. So uh, that's what Tyler Smith did in the, his one appearance against Western Carolina. I remember a lot of the talk last week from Robert, who's not here this week, was about Gavin Williams. And I think Chase touched on him too. 
Um, we talked about that fastball that's going to be up around 95, and I mean that didn't disappoint. He only made he made one appearance in the last game in the ninth inning against the Catamounts, but then he also pitched against Campbell in yesterday's game. And I don't think a single person even made contact with the ball. He's all fastball so far. He looks absolutely electric. And I think that if they ever need him for two or three innings, he's going to be fine. Defensively, the team, ECU, held Western Carolina to eight runs total. Do you think that was the pitching or the field? I definitely will have to say the pitching. Like, just forcing them into tough situations where, like, they'll get down in a hole, like, two strikes, like three balls and two strikes, and then they got to go for it. Like Tyler Smith not allowing any runs, Trey Benton doing very like a very good job in the first game. I believe that it, it was definitely pitching, definitely pitching because otherwise everyone in the field would not be in a position to, you know, make plays. Just to play devil ad advocate to that, because you're right, the pitchers did do a great job keeping men off base, but the ECU fielders only had one error compared to to 13 errors between Western and the Cat and uh, Campbell, and the one error went to Turner Turner Brown, the shortstop, in Game One, where he tweaked his hamstring and hasn't played since. Mm -hmm. um, Brady Lloyd did bobble the first ball of the series. Uh, that could have arguably arguably been an error, but then Turner's could have arguably not. So it's really only one error either way. Earlier this weekend, the weekend clash against Campbell University, ECU defeated them seven to two. Was that what everyone on this table expected? Yes, definitely what I expected. Um, Campbell's not the best team in, in NCAA, mm -hmm. and ECU is supposed to come out and, and really beat teams like this. If they're, it, There was a worry for me if they were going to come out and really overlook this Campbell team because they got this big UNC series coming up, but uh, they, they performed well and, and beat the team that they're supposed to beat. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Being the baseball writer from last year and watching the ECU team that comes off a of Super Regional, has all these Omaha hopes, and they dropped two games to Campbell during the weekday last year. But you put Alex Burleson, who's supposed to be a first baseman, who has a bat like no one else, um, you put him on the mound to start for the first time, and he goes three innings. He only allows two hits, no earned runs, and he, again, has three walks, adding to six from the starters, only one to the bullpen. I think they really took care of Campbell like they should have. Mm -hmm. I believe that with Campbell, ECU had, like, had all the momentum just going in. Victoria series against Western Carolina kind of like helped boost the confidence, you know, confidence with the coach, confidence with the players to where they can like hit the road and, you know, show that they can perform as well on the road just like they do at home. This weekend, ECU will have the challenge of taking on, I think they're still ranked number six in the country, but UNC and they're two and three right now. And they will travel to Durham, North Carolina to play on two opposing fields that aren't their home. Do you think that will play a factor into how they play this weekend? Um, you know, the away crowd always plays a factor. Um, you're not playing in front of your home fans. You obviously have a disadvantage. But as far as the travel itself goes, it's not too far of a, of a travel. I don't think that plays too big of a factor. Just, just really fan support. Play, plays the big factor. And I don't think fan support will really make that big of a factor because last year I was at the UNC game and there were a lot of purple and gold fans out there and I expect there to be a lot of Tar Heel fans here on Friday and then Saturday will kind of be a good mix of both when they play in Durham. Um, I think the bigger problem will be that now UNC has dropped back-to-back -back weekday games. They're going to come in looking to prove that they deserve to be number six in the country after starting off two and three. I think you got a really angry Tar Heel team and a I'm hoping not a complacent Pirates team, but I mean, you start off 4-0, it's hard not to fall into that complacency. I believe, I mean, they're ranked number six still for a reason, despite dropping the past two matchups. Like, I believe UNC will come out ready to, you know, prove that they still got it. You know, that spectators, like viewers, fans cannot doubt them. But I believe at the same time, though, ECU could come in looking to pull off the upset you know, possibly try to move up in the standings, finally, like, become ranked. Now on to the predictions. This weekend for the UNC series, I have ECU taking the series 2-1. What do y'all have? Um, I actually have UNC coming out on top in the series 2-1. Um, while ECU has performed well thus far this season, going 4-0, uh, they haven't really played anyone to their caliber yet. So I'm excited to see how the Pirates come out, and uh, hopefully they do prove me wrong and, and come out and win this series, but I do have the number six Tar Heels coming out on top. Yeah, that's totally fair scrutiny, that, that opponents haven't really been up to par yet. 
But I do think that ECU will pull this off 2-1. I think that Friday, they'll be fine in front of the home crowd. I think it'll be absolutely electric. And then you go on the road, I think that they're going to be able to steal one just because of how good that pitching has been. And then the situational hitting with two outs, with a guy on second. It's been almost 80% of the time that the Pirates are driving in that run. I know it's really early in the season, but so far there haven't really been too many signs of weakness yet. My prediction, I believe UNC will take the series 2-1. to one. I believe ECU will do just fine on Friday playing in front of their home crowd. But playing a number six ranked Tar Heels, I don't think they would allow ECU to steal another game. Like, I think they'll come out angry or ready to play pretty much like Saturday and Sunday when ECU has to hit the road, meet them in their home turf. Like Tyler, I do agree that we have not seen many hiccups from the ECU baseball team, and I think they will take this 8-1 or 7-1 record going into the next weekend, weekdays weekday clash against um, Old Dominion University and they come into this game two and two and what are your predictions for that? Um, I believe ECU actually comes away with a sweep here. Old Dominion is a very good team. They over the years they produced Justin Verlander uh, really good players over there at Old Dominion but at the end of the day I do feel like the Pirates are gonna take what they what they uh, learn from this UNC series and uh, build off it and, and get a sweep. Yeah, absolutely, that's something that Godwin is just a master at, is learning from the mistakes from even last season. You see they come out 4-0, and even if the opponents haven't been up to par, it's ECU has looked phenomenal. Mm -hmm. There's been no hiccups, there's been no like letdown or anything like that, which is why I think they might not fall into complacency. Uh, in terms of Old Dominion, I think it's kind of a Campbell situation where they should take care of business. They should beat Old Dominion in the one game weekend, or weekday series. Um, I expect them to only have one loss, like Aaron, going into next weekend series. I believe that ECU will take care of business as well against Old Dominion. Old Dominion University hasn't really showed, like, I guess that they can really compete with an ECU baseball team like this right now that seems to have no flaws, most likely ha take a loss to UNC this weekend, but like ECU will definitely take care of business. If I can add one thing bringing it back to UNC, I think if anyone wants to learn anything about the Pirates hitters and how they're going to move forward in the season, watch Friday's game, watch how they approach John Luca. I'm going to try this last name, Delatry. I'm not <laughs> sure if I got that right. I'm sorry, Tar Heel fans. Um, he only had... 19 walks in 97 innings last year, and ECU has done a good job seeing the ball like we talked about Connor Linton. They've drawn a lot of walks so far this season. It's going to be interesting how they approach the plate against such a consistent pitcher. With Tyler and I, Robert Romero, the other baseball writer, has chosen to choose ECU for the weekend series 2-1 over UNC and the victory in the weekday clash against ODU. That's it for Tech Spurts today. Thank you very much for watching. Join us next week when we recap the UNC series and ODU.